Well, let's go into Cecil Hack's tonsorial, tons, try to say that, tonsorial emporium vitals and drugs. And anybody know what a tonsorial, uh, exactly. The, and the barber pole out there is an original barber pole, but, um, and I don't remember what the colors represent. One re recommend, uh, means a, a, a doctor or a surgeon, and they have different meanings, the red, white, and blue on there. Mm -hmm. So over here we have a, what they call a bean counter. Now that's what the collectors call them today. But historically, a bean counter was an accountant. And so the collectors in antique shops and stuff, they call them a, um, they call them a bean counter. These are very, very interesting. This is where you would get your beans and, and popcorn and stuff like that. And they're, they're actually inset little picture frames that have glass in them. Then you could pour the popcorn or beans or whatever in the back. And then the back there is a drawer that uh, where you could uh, use a scoop and, and uh, take the beans out and weigh them on the scale and, and, uh, and sack them up. So over here, this is what many of the fire extinguishers in the old buildings were like. And they, it was, it's a powder, but it, it snuffs out the, the, the uh, fire if you, of course, catch it fast enough. So we also had dry goods. We had drugs, and notice the old uh, uh, compound bottles back there in the back, the glass on glass. They're painted reverse glass and applied to glass bottles. And down this way, notice this apparatus here on the, on the ceiling is a string holder. And you would pull out the string to wrap your, your uh, uh, packages. So that's what this is. We have the barber, tonsorial emporium, the barber. And this is an 1888 barber chair uh, from my barber in, in Telluride. We actually know his, what his name was. And uh, we put this cloth over here to protect this inlay. If you'll notice this inlay, it's very intricate of a baby laying in a poppy. And, uh, uh, a dove or whatever there, very, very intricate. But these were also used as in uh, um, opium dens. Big cities had uh, opium dens and uh, uh, like San Francisco and Denver, and it was illegal around 1900, but you know, uh, the people that had the st shops would uh, pay off the the authorities and, and, and have the uh, opium, opium dens. And uh, like you ladies over here, you would uh, not, may not belong to a garden club or a um, women's club, but you might belong to an opium smoking club. And you would come in and you would lay back in these chairs and smoke opium and go into euphoria and talk about your significant other or the gossip in the town and that sort of thing like that. They were pretty prevalent in, in, in the historic West. This is my grandfather's uh, shaving mug and it says G.W. Fike and he was a printer and collectors really like to get professional, collect professional shaving mugs because and they bring high dollars because they, it gives their profession and in this case he was a photographer and he was a printer um, G, where is it gw fight here right here so and there you know they'd have one for a carpenter and and of course you would come in and lay back in here daily or every other day or so and uh, uh, get a shave out using your 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 cup which had a cake of of uh, shaving uh, cream in there. And down this way, oh, I wanted to mention the, the uh, like the showcases out of a, a, a Kelowna grocery store. And, but if you look close, it's all inlaid all around and down here on the bottom. And this sits down in a, in a little bin. But anyway, today our, our uh, uh, cabinets are wafer board with veneer over them and 
you know, don't last long at all. This is 130, 40 years old and still as sturdy as a rock and uh, all handmade. So anyway, and it has a lazy, lazy Susan in it. So you could turn it around. I don't know who could reach up that high back then, but, but anyway. And then I want to talk about this, this case here. Notice this cape. This is a mourning cape from the Civil War. And we know who the lady was. Uh, she lived in Arkansas. She was part Cherokee Indian. And as you know, uh, Arkansas was a Confederate state. And, and so she was violated by the Confederate Army. And uh, so her sons went to fight for the Union Army, and one of them was killed. And this, this, she made this cape in, in memory of him. And they say that one bead, that's just littered with beads, both front and back. And there's much more beads on the back than there is on the front. And they say that one bead represents uh, one tear. So she would make this, probably took her about a year to make it, with all those beads on there. And then she would wear it for about three, three uh, years in memory. Any questions? No, I think so. Okay, uh, we we can uh, we can we can move on out. So. Well, yeah. Well, I turned around and I saw it and I uh, thought, okay. Oh yeah, you want to say hi to Hastin Yazi? He he's probably from a trading post in Arizona, but he ended up in a car dealership in Grand Junction, <laughs> and uh, so I speak to him every time I come in the building. Hey, what's up? Yeah, what's up there? So enjoy the rest of your, uh, your tour.